Yeah, oh, oh, oh. Tweeters. The tweeters on my grandpa's speakers are blown, so I got some new three and a half inch tweeters. I've gotta install them. It's an unboxing video. It's so tiny. Box within a box. Audio. Oh. These are just very cute. Aw, this guy has fellow. Open. Why do I have this? Why did they send me three? One, two, three. When I contacted uh, this company, they said they were out of these speakers. It may be because they keep sending people three instead of two. The person in charge of counting needs to be replaced. I'm gonna build a guitar amp just with this. Oh my God, is that even possible? I'm gonna try to show you what's going on with my speakers. The left speaker, which is the right speaker, it's tweeter is blown, it's a subtle thing, but. Here's what's really funny. I dropped my laptop twice in one day and now the right speaker is blown somehow. So even my laptop speakers are like, I'll show you. I just wanna nip something in the bud in case there's some audio Nazis, some mixing Nazis out there. What I'm doing here with my speakers and this monitoring setup, this is not the way you're supposed to do it. You're not supposed to have, you're not supposed to be mixing on like hi-fi stereo speakers that are laid horizontally, that are not decoupled in a room where there's a slanted wall like this, where you have like a blown tweeter, there's a light. All these things are bad, right? But in reality, most of us don't have the luxury to have a perfect situation anyways. And there's several reasons why this is the way I'm doing it currently, and there's a reason why I'm not investing into really nice monitors, and I'm gonna address all of those. First of all, the mission behind the studio is to try to use as much recycled and leftover stuff as possible to build something out of basically just what I find in here, or at the dump, or next to free on Craigslist. That's the whole idea behind it. These are my grandpa's speakers. They're what I have, and they sound pretty good. I can, I can get roughly there with a mix. Now, I don't ever start and end a mix on these speakers. And I didn't do that on my previous Yamaha speakers either. Whenever I mix something, I need to listen to it on several sources. I might get halfway there on the speakers I have, on speakers that I'm very familiar with, which is the most important thing, familiarity. But after that, I go and I listen to it on my phone where I listen to tons of music. I listen to it in my car. And between all these different sources, I get my mix much closer. I don't trust my ears to just mix on one source no matter what that source is. I have to hear it in multiple places. That's just the way I work. That's just me. That's just something that I enjoy. Call me crazy. As far as far as the setup and decoupling goes, if it was rattling like crazy, trust me, I would be the first one to be like, oh my god, I have to decouple these speakers and I have to make them like this so that the stereo width is not exaggerated. And if the acoustics were all messed up in this corner of the barn, I wouldn't be here either. I started out in that corner and then I moved over here and I tried different places. I'm here currently. I may move somewhere else, but I'm not hearing weird reflections in my mix and I'm not hearing things that disturb me. Just because on paper, this is like the wrong spot and I'm doing things wrong. If it's working, I don't see a need to change it. I'm basing everything on sound. Why don't I invest in nice speakers? I don't think I ever will again. I've had nice monitors before and I don't think I ever will because I'm much more interested in the sounds going in than how well I can mix those sounds. If you have garbage in, nobody can make you know something nice come out of it. I'd rather invest my money in a nice instrument, someone else more talented could always remix my song, but no one can replay my guitar for me or retrack my drums. So that's why my priority is always with the sounds going in and never the mixing. I don't ever want to spend money on fancy speakers anymore. I've done all that. I'd rather just get an aggregate mix from different sources and move on from there. So that's my philosophy on ridiculous. Now I need some silicone or some caulk to adhere the speaker to the thing. Oh, uh, here we go. That should do it. I don't believe that this stuff still works, so I'm gonna test it out. Uh, I'm gonna try to adhere something to something first. Here's something. Ah! It feels absolutely not sticky in any way. By the way, if you're new to the channel and you want to learn more about the history of the barn, I'll put a link here or here. You know, the whole with the cats and the ghosts and the cradle and the silver spoon. Oh. I have to solder. You can see here how it's cracked. I don't think these speakers are a perfect match. They're really not exactly the right size, so I'm not loving that. But I think I'm gonna just go with it anyways, because I think that this is the closest thing I can find. I don't know, I don't wanna deal with any more research. Sometimes, in this day and age, I just I just don't wanna research anymore. I just wanna get it on, you know? I should be able to solder this. Let's do it. 
got a VCR for bouncing down all my audio. All right, mom. Not the perfect size. They said that you can't find the perfect size anymore because it won't quite fit in these holes. So I have to drill new holes. I guess I'll put a little bit of silicone and I'll just solder these on. First, I will use these children's scissors. One and two. The old snip and strip. Bought this on Amazon for like $2, this whole kit. I recommend it because I know nothing about soldering and it seems to work. Got my, my thing. Do you, I think you stick your thing in there. I don't know what that does. Got the flux. I hear you got to use the flux. Mm, I don't think you're supposed to do this. I'm just going to dip Mr. Red in here and then, uh, yeah. Is this how you do it? I don't know. Wrap it and tap it. I don't know what I'm doing, yo. You're not going to learn anything from me. Pretty hot. Seems acceptable. Numero do. We're getting some response right away from the heat. Let's see if it works first. <laughs> All right, let's see if this will play you a song. First impression is, uh, yeah, it sounds good. I think actually, obviously they're not broken in, so turning my bass all the way down, my treble up, and just kind of sounds better than it was, so. I need a power drill. Oh, f oh, oh my god, <sighs> that's hilarious. Well, it actually felt much too easy, so I'm glad that happened. Let's f do all that again. So I've used this adhesive here that is intended to attach your speaker edge or thing to the to the metal. I used it to attach this tweeter to this like composite wood stuff. It seems to be holding. I did get a little on the speaker, but I don't know. I'll let it dry a little bit. And here's the old one. <laughs> yeah, that was that's a boo-boo. What a mess. I think that's why they give you three, because they know you're gonna drill a hole through one of them. Definitely the reason. I hope it works because I didn't test it. Let's try it out. Yeah. Oh, well, now I gotta teach. Oh, shit. Michael, can you hear me? Yes, I can. All right, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. You might make it onto my YouTube. <laughs> what, new, new microphone or new speakers, you said? I just changed one of these tweeters out on my speaker. The one <laughs> second before we hopped on this lesson, I am recording right now. So I'll, I'll, turn, I'll turn it off. Well, whatever, whatever you like. 